Hello, Andreas here. Audio Hijack 3 was released today and I was so glad to see a new version of this app because I'm using Audio Hijack quite a lot, especially for podcasting and various other things. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick tutorial for uh, two sessions that I've created with Audio Hijack that I think give you also not just a brief over overview what the app can do, but also kind of a value of things you can try by yourself. So let's look at the control movie loudness thing first. The problem that I solve with this session is you probably know the when you watch movies, you have certain parts that are much too loud and you have certain parts that are much too quiet. So the way we watch movies usually we just reach for the remote and turn the, turn the volume up and down as the movie progresses. So, and this is kind of annoying, you know. So what I'm doing here, I capture the system audio. I capture the system audio, send it through a, a through an effect, and then output straight to an output device, the internal speakers. So. This could be any other output, it's just for demonstration purposes, uh, the internal speakers. This AU Dynamics Processor is an effect coming from Apple and it's just a normal compressor, basically. Uh, and the idea is relatively simple. We catch the audio coming from the system and from a certain threshold up, we decrease the loudest parts and make them quieter so the, that the loudest parts are a little bit closer to the quietest parts. We decrease the dynamic range, we decrease the overall the dynamic range and, and therefore have a more consistent loudness level overall. This obviously goes at the cost of sound quality because we, when you decrease the dynamic range you lose certain bits, but it's not too bad, actually. Um, let me show you what the Dynamics processor, processor does, or how it is set up. You see that I have set a threshold of about minus 20 dB here. And you can control the headroom with this slider, and you see that I leave about 10 dB headroom. The less headroom you leave, the more this effect works and basically I would recommend to leave a little headroom this way the output audio sounds a little bit more fluffy. I let it sound like this dynamics processor thing destroys your audio signal. It's really not that bad but you have to be careful because when you set it to very harsh and straight values like this you lose a lot from the audio signal, but you know, setting it like this is not that bad. The other thing that I just want to recommend here, let me set this again, is when you drill down into details here, uh, you I would recommend to set a slightly longer attack time and the release time. Um, this leaves the audio signal coming in a little bit more um, natural and set this to about 0 0.1 seconds and you should be good. The only thing that you now have to do is start the session and because we don't have a recorder we don't have any actual audio file that is written. I have my Plex running here. This is this is Paul Check, by the way. Great YouTube channel putting out great great content and when I press play here you you're going to see the audio signal in the session in the in the background. Um, when you're doing this kind of stuff, you sometimes may be wondering if what you're doing actually is doing something. I would recommend then to add an EQ effect and just put it in the signal flow. Uh, the good thing about EQs is when you set them to something extreme, like 
in my case, uh, in the frequency range of 500 hertz plus 12 dB, uh, you can really hear a difference. And um, the only thing that I would recommend is to remove the audio effect <laughs> when you're done. And this animation, by the way, is quite neat. So the other setup that I want to show you is uh, my Skype podcasting. So we use Skype to uh, record our podcast, but only the backup track. I record my voice through a uh, mic that I have standing next to me and all the other participants of an episode also record themselves at home. And I just use the Skype backup track to uh, cut everything together. The good thing about Audio Hijack 3 now is once you start uh, the record uh, process, everything is in sync. So you can have multiple inputs now. And when you press record in the session, both recorders that I have here start to record. This is really great. I also find the menu bar meters really great. Uh, when you add these, you're going to see a meter in the menu bar, even when audio hijack is in the background. So you can keep track of the levels even when the application is not visible, which I find really, really helpful. Uh, the only thing that I want to mention here is when you have mono inputs like a single microphone, set your recorder to record a mono signal. This way you don't have to record unnecessary amounts of data. I've added a second output device here and turned it off because I want to be able to hear my podcast participants through my headphones, but I don't want to hear myself. So I just figured the easiest way around this is to add a second output device and said, turn it off. So let's just see this thing now in action. Uh, when I initiate the call, she's going to start to talk. This is why I have this little uh, pre-recording here. Um, when she starts to uh, talk, I press record in the in the session, so we have both uh, files in sync. And you can see when I speak into my microphone, we can hear it or we can see it on the second um, on the second track, and you see that the menu bar meters also work. Thank you. <laughs> and you can see that this thing works on the menu bar as well. So that was it. I hope you found this short Audio Hijack 3 tutorial helpful. Please check out the app. I really like it. I've been much looking forward to a new version of this particular app. Thanks for watching. Bye.